My name is Nathan Brerley. I'm owner of Brerley Farms Incorporated. I have wanted to farm and dairy farm my whole life. Like I would jump off the school bus and I could have my boots on and clothes changed before the bus was three quarters of a mile away. My father and I uh, own the farm together. He basically said, you're gonna do better th at this than what I ever can. You take it, I will help you. We milk 500 cows. Uh, we raise our replacement heifers as well. And for all those animals, we raise our own forages. We farm 750 acres, and all of those go to forage for the, the cows. In the last couple years, I've been fighting tar spot and corn. For the last 10 years, I've had insects in our in alfalfa. I've wanted to increase plant health, and it's very difficult to do that when you are feeding the plants a lot of commercial fertilizer, a lot of fungicide to keep away the disease, a lot of insecticide to kill the insects that you don't need. I knew there was a better way. I've made it my mission to learn more about how to make my system a healthier system, how to make it an easier system, how to not be handling so much chemical for myself, my family, my animals, my soil, and I came across Jim and uh, a video that he had posted online. Welcome to Advancing Health for Soils, Plants, and People. It was like a seven or eight hour video. I watched it two or three times and I said, this here is a system that's gonna work for me. Like this is what I've been looking for. I know that I'm not as good as what I should be right now, using fertilizer, um, doing full tillage, they don't foster the soil microbes. They kind of hinder what they're supposed to be doing. I'm harvesting forage, I'm hauling manure, all of those things have heavy equipment, just really pushing down on the soil. So I wanted living roots because the roots will help hold up that wheel traffic. But even that, I need to get seed into that soil profile and I can't do it no-till. And I've tried every tillage tool out there to loosen up the soil but all it does is compact it and rip roots out of the ground. I started looking more at the Curse Buster. I heard the name of the Curse Buster on a webinar that I was listening to. I'm like, this thing looks like it'll work. This Curse Buster tine enters the soil, lifts, fractures, and gets that sediment layer broken up. It has just that right blend of loosening but yet not destroying. And it appears to be working really good. This is my first year out. The corn that's coming out of the ground right now is much more robust than when I was using chemical fertilizer in the past. So I have a field, it's a 100 acre field, and there's a couple squares out of this field where you can see a, this contrast between my old system of full tillage and the stand of corn is beautiful. It's nice and black. It's picket fence rows of corn, but that soil had no living roots on it from September of last year until May 10th when the corn germinated and popped out of the ground. That is a long time for soil to be bare. Soil biology is dying. Like we are not doing what we should be doing to that soil. Like. Mother Nature puts a plant out there wherever. That's what God wanted us to do, was to have a plant, just like in the, the woods or the roadside, there's always a plant growing, feeding that soil. So as a farmer, I think I need to emulate what that system is. So it may look really, really good right now, where there is black dirt, and that's what a farmer thinks is the best, but we have to use too much fertilizer to get there. We have to push that plant with a drug instead of the soil feeding the plant. I've been trying to find that balance between chemical fertilizer and manure and how much less fertilizer I can do to get an end product. Most of the advice that we get is from a fertilizer dealer. 
and they may have great intentions to want to cut back on fertilizer, but that's how they pay their bills. I knew I had to get to a separate group of people to get honest advice. A new rotation that I'm doing is corn silage to trit in the fall. Once that trit is harvested in the spring, then we plant a cocktail mix of five different plants. Sorghum sedan grass, two types of clover, a hairy vetch, and Italian ryegrass, which all of those things will work together in harmony to uh, help the soil microbes harvest what they need for the plant and do that in a better way than a monoculture crop like alfalfa. Those plants are also more digestible for a cow than what alfalfa is alone. So we're using that instead of alfalfa in our diet. With that cocktail mix in the summertime, we will cut that four times. Uh, first time will be about 35 days after we plant it. Uh, at that time, we put fresh manure down on the soil. So we're cycling our manure. And then after we cut it each time, we put a little bit more manure on every time. So we're cycling that manure nutrient immediately into a living crop and getting that into a forage crop. All my other crops are getting cow manure as well right before planting. And even my triticale, as it gets planted in the fall, we haul fresh manure on it throughout the fall and winter time and even early spring to feed that crop manure instead of commercial fertilizer. With our manure, we're treating it with uh, safe manure. That's a product that helps to uh, make that manure more available for a plant and for the soil, healthier for the soil. It also helps with um, pathogens in the manure some so that we can harvest that crop and put it into a cow in a safe manner. It doesn't have as much of those harmful pathogens in that manure uh, as it's going to forage in a quick fashion. Because we could literally haul manure and 30 days later be harvesting that crop and I don't want to be feeding cows manure. There's a way that we can monitor how the plants are growing. Um, tissue sampling has been something that I've used and it's helpful, but there's also this uh, testing called sap testing. And that I think is a more representative snapshot of where that plant is and what we need to do to feed it more appropriately for the rest of the season. I'm using biology next to my corn seed um, with Pacific Grow fertilizer right at the furrow. I'm putting 28 next to the corn like I used to, running about 15 gallons of 28 with the planter and some sulfur. And then I'm letting that corn take on whatever it has for biology, soil, that little bit of fertilizer. And I'm gonna run that all the way through the season until the corn tells me it's ready for more. Just like I help my cows out when they're not feeling well, I can help these plants out the same way. I just need to do testing on it before I just throw a bunch of stuff at it and hope for the best. It's just us as farmers doing a better job with what we were given to manage. I like challenges that can work if you just put your mind to thinking a little bit differently. I'm excited about the changes that we've done and really looking forward to the future on uh, how much more this will progress and how much better I can get the system than what I used to have it.